Hello everyone, I'm Dennis and I've been always curious how CPUs work and uh, you know reading the theoretical books and articles on the CPUs that's not really interesting it gives you some explanation how things work but you don't really understand how they work so I decided to build my own CPU and uh, obviously I would like to build a big one unfortunately I have no idea how so I'm going to start with a small one. Maybe I will build the second one if I learn how to do CPUs with a smaller version, but I would like to start with a really small one. I would like things to be interesting. So I'm not going to make it with a FPGA or any other kind of uh, custom hardware. I'm going to use the 74XX standard logic ICs and even more. I'm going to limit myself to like really basic blocks of uh, standard logic like logical gates, uh, like uh, just the registers, uh, multiplexers, demultiplexers. Well, I'll be flexible and if I'll need something more complicated, I will take it, but I will try to stick to the smaller ones. And with this, it's hard to build a really nice CPU, well, at least if you are a beginner. So I'm going to build a small one. I'm going to build an 8-bit CPU. Oh, which means it will have 8-bit address bus and obviously it will be able to address just 256 bytes. That's not too much. And if I will go to the von Neumann architecture where the code and the data are shared and they share same RAM, I will have just 256 bytes for both RAM and code, like for both data and code. That's not enough. That's really not enough. That's really small. Uh, but fortunately, we have a Harvard architecture. And in the Harvard architecture, the data and the code, they are split into separate address spaces, into separate memory areas, and, into, and they use separate buses. That's actually an advantage of a Harvard architecture, because uh, in a von Neumann architecture, we have to wait for the instructions to be fetched while we are working to store like write or read data from memory and vice versa. With the Harvard architecture you can do it in parallel. But everything comes with the price. With the Harvard architecture you need double more RAM, you need double more buses, you need to double a lot of your hardware and as I'm making it from the standard logic I don't want to double things. So I'm going to make my own architecture. I will have separate address spaces for code and data but I will still have a shared bus like combining worst of two worlds for the simplicity and that's regarding the address space I also would like my data bus be 8 bits so CPU will be able to read just a single byte and because of that I would like my comments to be also a single byte comment so all the comments should fit just one byte which means I will have just 256 comments. This may sound like a small number, but trust me, that's more than enough. We actually will end up with less than 30 comments. Well, I will extend it a little bit, but that's more than enough. What I'm going to have as an architecture? Well, there are several approaches, like uh, x86 machines, they've been able to directly operate with the RAM, so you can write an instruction saying like, hey, uh, could you please take this data from this address? increment it and put it back. Uh, but I'm going to build a load store machine where you can only load data into the register and uh, store data from the register to the RAM. You cannot directly operate on the RAM values. You have to load it first to the RAM. This makes things much simpler. And uh, I'm not going to build a classical register machine like x86 or ARM uh, where you have a plenty of registers, like on a small risk 5 you may have R0 to R15, like 16 registers, and you load data here and there. No, that's too complicated. Instead, I'm going to build a stack machine. And with a stack machine you have several, uh, let's call them operational or stack registers, where data travel upward the stack and uh, downward the stack, and your commands, your operations, they only operate on a pre-wired register X and Y. So I will have four registers, X, Y, Z and T. I stole that idea from an older like, 
HP calculators for maybe 50s. I will also have x0 that will store the previous value and the idea is simple. You put the num you, you put the values, you put the operands to the x and then propagate them to the y and to the z and to the t and your ALU takes your operands from x and y like for unary operations they will take just from x for binary operations from x and y and the result will be put bet back to x. Obviously if you take x and y the value from z will be copied to y and value from t will be copied to z and so on and so forth and the all value of x will be transferred to x0 so you can get it back so you see your data like travels upward and downward all the time with this i will be able to greatly save on the wiring for my register file and technically i don't need register file that's enough already but I have just four registers, I have just 256 bytes of RAM, I have just 256 bytes of code and I have load store architecture, so my density of the code will be pretty small. And to avoid constant load and store polluting my code, I would like to create some register file. I will have, uh, say, 15 registers, so my X will be actually 16. It will be register number 0, but I will have register from R1 to R15, just 15 registers. And like, uh, not like a normal register file, it will not be able to operate, uh, to be connected to the ALU. I will not be able to operate it directly, but I will be able to store value from X to register file and retrieve it from register file to X. I would also like to have some kind of indirect addressing. And for this, I will make one sort of the registers in the register file auto incrementing if they participate in indirect addressing operations and another one sort will be auto decrementing so every time you use the register from lower sort like r1 to r5 for addressing ram the value in that register will automatically decrement and for the upper sort like r10 to r15 opposite it will automatically increment uh, this way you can also save on updating the addresses. Yeah, uh, what else do I need? Obviously I need some kind of a PC counter, or program counter, yeah. I need some PC register, program counter that points to the current instruction that will send that current instruction back uh, outside to my memory and the memory will provide with the opcode stored on that address. And I will have an opcode decoder uh, that will actually control everything else, like ALU, or stack, or register file, and so on and so forth. I also need a memory interface because I would like my data to be stored from X to memory and vice versa. And I think I think I will change it. So yes. I will store the data from X, but the address will come from Y register or the register file. And in case you use the register file, those auto increment, auto decrement rules will automatically apply. Uh, that's almost it, but I would like to have two more things, which I forgot. Uh, I would like to have some control structures. Uh, so first of all, I will need a branching unit and I will need a separate, like let's call it hardware stack registers. So the branching unit will analyze the content of X. Yeah, I, initially I thought that I will analyze the content of ALU, but then I decided I will analyze the content of X register. And in case it fits the requirement, like it's zero, non-zero, greater than, less than, so on and so forth, we'll take a branch and update PC. And for the stack registers, I would like to implement some kind of uh, sub function sub program call or function call so i will have a special instruction like call at this address and the address will be stored at i believe at y or maybe at x i need to i will decide it later but the idea is that return address will be stored in s0 s3 registers automatically that those registers will not be visible for the programmer and when you hit the return instruction it will just take the top of that stack and return you back so like four level of call stack, that's call stack registers. And I guess that's enough. This is it. It's time to think of my commands. What kind of commands do I need? 
uh, obviously I will need knob. Uh, the knob will be the first instruction that's executed when uh, the CPU resets. Uh, it needs to be all zeros because the only way to reset the register from a 74xx series is just to set it to zero. So everything needs to be zeros. Or otherwise you need a lot of wiring. I don't want to go that way. So 74xx tells me that I need knob as zero. Um, I need some instructions to load the immediate value into the X register and here I have a problem. I cannot load 8-bit value into 8-bit register because my whole opcode is already 8-bit and I need to leave some space for the command itself. So my idea is that I will load like lower and upper part of the register for bits and I will have two separate comments like load upper, load I will call it lul, loop and lul, that's really fun, lul. And uh, later I decided that I will make a clear command, like set x to zero, just clear it, because nop is already in use. Uh, I need some commands to control the stack, like push the stack, so x goes to y, y goes to z, z goes to t, and t just disappears, and this doesn't update x zero. I would like to act I would like to have a command to exchange x and y, and again not touching x0. I would like to have a command to rotate the stack, so t goes down to z, z goes down to y, y goes down to x, and x goes upper to t, so it's like going downward. And again it doesn't touch uh, x0, and I would like a command that will actually push x0 back to x1, or oh, sorry, push x0 back to x, and uh, uh, everything else is like pushed again, so recover the old value. Okay, as for the ALU, I'm going to implement really simple commands like add, uh, subtract, uh, maybe multiply, I'm not sure because the multiplication, I, I would like everything to happen in one cycle, so I'm not going to make it pipelined, and the multiplication uh, is really complicated, it requires a lot of hardware, so maybe I will skip it, but I will reserve the opcode for it. And uh, instead of multiplication, I will have, obviously I will not have a division, but I will have left and right shifts just for one bit to the left and one bit to the right. And all of those commands, they also update x0. So for like add, subtract, multiply, they will take x and y. Uh, they will pop the values from t and z back to y, like downward. Uh, the result goes to x and the previous x value goes x to, to x0. Um, Simple things, I'm going to make uh, bitwise and orcs or not. They are simple to, simple to implement and uh, it could be nice to have them in the ALU. At least I can make some branching. So yeah, I need some branching commands. Something like jump to zero, if add to address at y, if x equals zero. So you see, it's a binary, address stays at y, but we check the x. Uh, jump not zero, same rules, jump if less than, jump greater than, and uh, unconditional jump to address at y. Pay attention, jump to address at y. That's important because I'm going to implement the same for the registers for indirect. Um, as you remember, I need, uh, so I need, uh, and as you remember, I have a call stack, so I'll have two commands for the call stack, sub and red and the sub calls to address and y and stores next PC value in a call stack registers, like pushes it back and red pops the last value in the call stack register and jumps to it, so it updates a PC. Uh, I forgot the load and store commands. Yeah, I need to be able to load data from address at y to x and vice versa, load data from x to address at y. And yeah, I forgot that I, I need to be able to read value from register file to the X and write value from, to the register file from the X. That's all my commands. And uh, I have like about, I can calculate them right now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. A uh, little bit less than 30 comments, so it means I need 5 bits. And I have a problem right now. 
because uh, what I would like to do, initially what I plan to do, is that I will have in my 8-bit command, first 4 bits will be opcode and last 4 bits will be immediate to write into X or register. But I have more than 16 commands, which requires 5 bits, so I cannot do that. And instead, I will do it a little bit other way. We will have uh, four formats, or maybe like five formats of commands. So all zeros, that's not, because the default value of register is zero. Uh, if there are first two, like uh, leftmost bits are zeros, the rest, uh, the rest are considered and immediate to be loaded directly to X. So starting from one to, I think that's 63. In this case, I'll be able to uh, load most useful values, like the smaller one, into X in one command. So saving me uh, separate, or like saving me a little bit more space. Uh, then what I'm going to do, um, let's put like that loop and poop. I, I decided that it will be not, wouldn't be loop and loop. I decided it will be loop and poop. That's more funny. Uh, they will be like 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, and the rest is the immediate, like higher and lower. And you see, like, if one of the bits in two leftmost bits is 1, uh, that's an opcode of uh, other operation. So 0, 1, 0, 1, it's loop and poop. Uh, all the other register commands, I have like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 commands. They will fit. Uh, in total, like it's 8, it's 10, 10 commands, so they will fit the remaining 4 bits. It's below 16, so I can have loop and poop, I can have uh, read and write, and read and write require read register and write register. Uh, they, they, they require 4 bits, well, I have 15 registers in that particular case, but X is 0, so I need 16. Uh, load store. They can also use either R1, R15, or X, jump 0, jump unconditional, sub, so jump to somewhere else. Okay, I'm missing R here, doesn't matter. So sub to address at Y or in the register, and jump not 0, jump greater. I think I will choose jump greater, because jump 0, jump not 0 is like easy to implement. If you have jump 0, you can make, simply make jump not 0. In a code but it's hard to make jump greater jump uh, less than so I will go with a jump greater and for the rest so in case I have one one zero zero like left left of four pieces like one one zero zero it means that the rest of the command is also an opcode so I'm putting all the commands that don't require any uh, arguments like immediate or register I'm putting them under one one zero zero like opcode and I know that okay I need now to analyze the rest of it and this is it that's how I'm going to build it so just to recap I will have five formats of the opcode or I will have an, ob an ability to load with six, well, six bit value directly not eight but six bit value directly with a single command I will have register r1 r15 with a r1 r5 auto decrementing on indirect call and R10, R15 auto incremental and direct call. I will have four level of function call support by the call stack, 256 bytes of data memory, 256 of code memory. And I think this sounds like a plan. So at the next step, I would like to make a small assembly tool for myself that will actually read all those assembly mm, memos, mnemonic codes, I guess they call it mnemonic codes, and produce the binary codes, because I don't want to write it right in binary, and I would like to make a small simulator, not a clock precise, just some kind of simulator to check if those commands is enough, and to check if I can really code that CPU. But that will be in the next series, and thanks for watching.